Hey, my friends, we're back with another solids problem. So we're talking axial elongation, but this time it's a statically indeterminate problem. We can't just solve it with our axial elongation equations. We're going to have to have extra equations to solve this. Statically determinate, indeterminate means that you've got to have some more equations than you're given um, to solve this. You have to have a little bit more information, okay? And we call those equations the compatibility equations. We've talked about that last in the last video. So let's talk about this problem here. So we have a column here or two bars um, of different diameters. And they're made of 836 steel, both of them. They're in between two walls. They're rigidly fixed on one end. But this end, there's an air gap between the, uh, the bar and the wall, OK? So when this 200 kilonewton force gets applied to that bar, we think that it's going to close up that air gap of 0.15 millimeters, right? It's very small. It's going to close that air gap, and then this wall is going to prevent it from moving any farther. So how do we find the reactions at A and D? Here's D, this wall. A is that wall over there. So reaction forces, we've got to find that, OK? So how do you do that? What are these compatibility equations? OK, so number one, here's what we got. OK, so if you've got a wall here, a wall there, and here's this bar. OK, and we're going to assume we're going to assume that this bar, that this bar, when it gets this force applied to it, that it's going to close that gap and it's actually going to touch that other wall. So what's going on there? Well, there's a 200 kilonewton force here. Over here, this is going to be touching the wall and compressing into the wall. So the wall is going to be pushing back. So there's going to be a reaction at D. And then over here, what is there going to be? Well, there's going to be over here, the 200 kilonewtons is going to cause it to try and pull off of this wall. And so this wall's reaction is to pull this way. We'll call that the reaction at A. So there's our first compatibility equation. And it comes from statics, doesn't it? So RA plus rd is equal to 200 kilonewtons so that's a biggie right there that's a, that's our compatibility equation that we're going to need to solve this so to solve this problem we're going to use something called the method of superposition okay the method of superposition and this is pretty easy okay so we're just going to take away this wall over here. Whoop! Just pretend it's not there. And then we're going to let this guy expand. We're going to let it grow, let it grow. OK, never mind. Uh, we're going to let it grow without that wall there. And then we're going to take and put the wall back. And it's going to compress it back to this amount here, OK? So step one, OK, step one. Let's let this thing go. So we're going to have a wall. This, whoa, that's not straight. Sorry. There you go. OK, so there's our bar. We've deleted that wall over there, the wall at D. And we're just going to let this thing grow. So here we go. We've got, bam, 200 kilonewtons on there. OK, now if there's no wall over there at all, this thing is just going to extend from axial elongation, right? So we need to calculate how much it's going to extend. So we'll find that by delta equals PL over AE, our play equation, right? There he is, right there. We talked about that in the last video. Now, I've got a question for you. If you have 200 kilonewtons there, uh, who's experiencing the 200 kilonewtons? Who's stretching? Is this guy stretching? This guy stretching? The whole thing stretching, right? Imagine if I had one long rubber band there, right? And I grabbed that rubber band right in the middle of it, right? And I started stretching on it, okay? This side over here obviously is going to stretch, right? But what about this bit over here on the other side of my finger? When I stretch that rubber band, this part over here is just along for the ride. It doesn't stretch any. So the only thing that's going to be elongating is just this part, not that part. Now, when I compress it back, the whole thing will compress, right? But as far as the elongation, only this guy here is, is uh, extending, OK? So let's find out how much this bar uh, grows in length by using this equation. 
And we got a lot of uh, things in our equation here, so we got to be careful with our units, okay? So first things first, 200 kilonewtons is our force P, okay? So I'm going to put this, I'm going to put 200,000 newtons, okay? It's 200 kilonewtons. I got three extras on there for my kilo, right? And then the length, the length of the part that's expanding is just this bit here. The length is 600 millimeters. Okay, divided by A, what is A of that section there? Well, it's 50 millimeters diameter, so that's pi r squared, so pi times 25 squared, and that's going to be millimeters squared, isn't it? And then E, well, E for A36 steel. That's a look em up. We're going to have to look that one up on our table. All right, so I'm going to the table in the back of my book, and of course I want the metric table. Where is the metric? That's down here, isn't it? And for A36 steel, um, E is unknown. There it is. Uh, modular elasticity, 200 gigapascals. Okay. 200 gigapascals. Okay, so E equals 200 GPA. If I want to turn that into mega, giga is 10 to the 9th, mega 10 to the 6th, so that's three extra zeros, isn't it? So E equals 200,000 megapascals, which is a newton over millimeter squared, right? So I'm going to put 200,000 newton over millimeter squared. Millimeter squared goes away, Newton and Newton go away, and that's going to leave me with a delta in millimeters. That's what I wanted. All right, let's put it in our calculator and see what do we get. All right, here we go. Come on, calculator, wake up. Okay. 200,000 times 600 equals divided by pi equals divided by 25 squared equals divided by 200,000 equals 0 0.30558, okay? So delta is going to equal point, whoa, 30558 millimeters, okay? And it's okay to carry extra decimals will round at the end. I like carrying lots of decimals and then rounding at the very end. Okay, so we've let this thing grow, and it grew 0 0.30558. Did that, is that going to close the gap? Yeah, all right, yes, it is. It's going to close the gap because the gap was only 0.15. Okay, so now this thing is out here, right? It's over here somewhere, okay? Now we have to take the wall and we have to compress that thing back from the wall. So how, how do we do that? Well, how much is it going to have to compress it back? Well, it's not going to compress it back to where it started. The wall can only push it back to where the wall is, right? So it, we're going to take that number and we're going to subtract that number from it. So minus 0.15 millimeters is 0.1558, right? Uh, five, five, eight, one, five, 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 eight. So this amount right here is the delta that the wall needs to push back, right? So he just needs to push back whoop, to right there. And this little amount there is 0.15538, okay? So let's erase this and let's do that part. All right, so the next thing we gotta think about is we've got this thing stretched, right? The 200 kilonewtons made us expand. So we have taken into account the effect from the 200 kilonewtons, okay? So we're gonna ignore him now, okay? Now we're gonna compress it back into shape. Who's gonna compress it back into shape? RD. So what's the force in this section here? RD. What's the force in this section over here? RD, right? So this guy here is going to be compressing it back into shape. We, we have to ignore this because we've already taken into, the, into account 
the effect from this guy, okay? So here's what we've got. Delta is equal to 0.15558, which that's how much we have to push it back. All right, who's going to do that? Well, force RD is, okay? So RD times, we're doing PL over AE here, right? So I'm going to do PL over AE for section section one and then section two, right? So here's for section one and then plus PL over AE for section two, okay? So for this one, the length is 600 millimeters, okay? Divided by A for this guy is pi times 12.5 squared times... Uh, what was it, 200, 200 uh, gigapascals, which was 200,000 megapascals, okay, plus, here comes the compression of this section, which is the same thing, force RD times the length, 600 millimeters again, divided by the area, pi R squared, it's 25 because this is 50, uh, times 200,000. Okay, so let's put this in our calculator and we just got to solve for RD. Let's see what we get. Okay, so 600 divided by pi equals divided by 12.5 squared equals divided by 200,000 equals, whoo, little bitty, right? This is point one, two, three, four, five zeros, six, one, one, two, R, D. Let's see what that one is. So 600 divided by pi equals divided by 25 squared equals divided by 200,000 equals 0.1234515528 millimeters. Oh, not millimeters, RD, sorry. Okay, so plus 0 0.12345, equals, so 0 0.15558 is equal to 0 0.00000764 RD. See why it's important to carry lots of decimals, right? So 0.15558 divided by answer equals 20, so RD, 2364.17, and that's Newton's or, or, why is it Newton's, right? Because this was in megapascals, which is newtons over millimeter squared, so that'll make RD newtons, okay? Or 20.36 kilonewtons, okay? So if RD is 20.36 kilonewtons, then RA must be equal to two, this equation here, right? 200 minus 20.36, which makes RA equal to 179.64 kilonewtons, okay? So there's RA, and there is RD. So probably the most common mistake I see making is what is the force in this section here? And they would cover this up and they would say, oh, it's RD minus 200. Well, it's not RD minus 200 because we've already taken to, into account the amount of stretching that the 200 is doing in that first step, right? This is kind of like when we had those uh, shear moment diagram problems where we had downward force and we laid them over the top of upwards forces and when we laid them on top of each other, some of those forces canceled out, right? That's the method of superposition. And so when, you, when you're talking about this next step of pushing it back into place, you ignore the effect of this guy because we already took into account his effect by stretching it. Does that make sense? So there's your RA and RD. Kind of a tricky little old problem there, okay? These are called statically indeterminate. I hope this helps and answers some questions. I'll see you on the next video.